I've been sent to Stuart Model's twin launch engine and the idea of this is to have a look at it and see whether it's worth repairing. So I'm opening the box at the moment and this is the inlet manifold, not a good start. That's very much a disaster area. I'll just put that on one side and revisit it later. I wonder what else is in the box. This looks like the cylinder assembly, yes indeed it is. And this is the main bed plate and the crankshaft assembly. So I'll put that on one side as well and have a look at it all in detail very shortly. There's also a box of bits that came with the engine, so I think it's time to look in here. There are quite a few O-rings of different sizes and thicknesses. Also in the main package there is the drawing, the original drawing. But unfortunately I can't show any details of this drawing because the copyright is owned by Stuart Models. So it's back into the plastic box to see what we've got. There are quite a few piston ring type O-rings that are a little bit on the thin side and there also are some O-rings for the glands. So it's quite well equipped, I think everything's here. In another plastic bag there are also two pairs of cast iron piston rings. These are the ones I would use on the engine. I'll try them on the piston very shortly. Also there's a very nice oil reservoir and pipes that feed the main bearings. And apart from being very useful as a lubricator, things like this on model engines just make the thing look better, unlike the inlet manifold. The inlet manifold is not a thing of beauty. The displacement lubricator is fine though, that's a commercial item. This is the exhaust manifold that's from the same school of soldering as the inlet manifold. This really spoils the engine, these are not serviceable items and will go in the bin. They're quite easy to make correctly, so I don't see why someone's gone to the trouble of making them so badly. I just hope this does not reflect the general engineering standard of the rest of the engine. So I'll quickly put this exhaust manifold out of the way and look at some of the other pieces. Looking at the parts in the box, at first glance the engineering standard looks to be quite good. This for instance is one of the pistons. The only thing I can see that's wrong with this is that the piston rings are not right. There are two very very thin piston rings on the piston. I would machine the groove to take one thick steam grade silicone o-ring. Not two small ones like this. But for now, after removing a piece of gasket from one of the cylinder covers and putting these parts back in the box, because I want to have a look at the piston. Just one piston will do for starters. And as I've just said, it's not good practice to have two thin o-rings like this, so I've removed them and fitted the cast iron piston rings. These piston rings are slightly too tight in the groove. They need to float. So I would slightly machine the piston and then fit both of these piston rings to the piston during reassembly. Time now to look at the main cylinder block. This is a very important component. And it looks okay. It does on one side, at the other side the lug's broken off. This is quite common, it's no real big deal, but the fix is difficult. I could take it to a specialist repairer and get them to weld it up, but then it's risking damage to the main cylinder casting. Thinking ahead, I can make this work by putting an extra piece of metal in and the washer which holds everything together. After all, the structure has five of these lugs and even the broken one rests on top of one of the columns, as you can see here. The main idea of this inspection and assessment that I'm committing to video, because I do that anyway, is to be able to give the owner of the engine an estimate as to how much it's going to cost to repair it and put it into good order. And by good order, I mean very good order. An engine that will work as well as it looks. The first thing to look at in detail is the state of the ports and they're actually quite good. The port faces need cleaning up, but both the valves and the ports themselves seem to be in very good order, as you can see here when I remove the steam chest. There aren't any gaskets, so I'll need to make gaskets for this engine, but that's no big deal. What I'm looking at here is how the crosshead assembly fits. It's not a very good fit on the uprights, but there are some grub screws to hold it in position. All I'm really doing at the moment is checking the basic alignment. You can clearly see how it all fastens together by this clip. I've put the crosshead roughly in position and it seems to be about right. I don't think I'll have a great deal of problems with the alignment. And there is a little bit of adjustment because of the sloppy fit of this mounting bracket. The engineering is so-so on this engine. Some of it's okay, some of it's not so good. The machining of the main bearing journals looks okay. 
and they are very important, as is the crankshaft. So I'm going to have a look at the crankshaft, and the first thing I'm doing is removing the flywheel, and that comes away quite easily. So here is the crankshaft. I've put it in the lathe to have a look at it and see how true it is. I'm not spinning the lathe under power for obvious reasons, and I immediately see a problem. Can you see what it is? It's a very common problem. Here it is. It's a bit wobbly in the middle. Now really, if the engine was all clamped together, you may not notice this, because it's a very small problem, but it's not right. You would get a knock from the engine every time it goes over top dead centre. So this needs fixing, and the way to do it is to drill out the pin, re-lock tight the crankshaft together whilst holding it in the lathe, and then re-pin it with a larger diameter pin. As you can see, now I've cleaned it up, this pin is very sloppy, no good at all. It's time to check the state of the main bearings. But unfortunately, when I first put it together, I put the wrong bearing cap on, and it really looked like it was a rattle fit. But when I put the correct bearing cap on, it wasn't. The bearing fits are not too bad. You don't want them to be tight, and I could always machine a little bit off if I wanted to tighten the bearings. So here we have a pile of reasonably good bits. The flywheel's okay, the piston rings are brand new. The little oil is very nice and the bracket is a little bit dubious but serviceable. So that's the good pile. Then we have the bad pile. Starting with these. These are the inlet and outlet manifolds which are just going straight in the bin. They're absolutely awful. Then there is the broken cast iron lug on the cylinder and to cap it all the sloppy broken crankshaft. So I'm going to tell the owner of the engine that yes it's fixable but it's going to take considerable time so it isn't going to be a cheap job. And if I do end up getting the job of fixing this engine, I will make a video series about it. So for the moment, as always, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.